Good afternoon. Welcome to the world of piping. Now, when you do receive your chanter, my dear folks, you have to be very careful on how you take it apart. So that way the reed sits in this chamber, inside this chamber. So when you do receive the chanter, it will be complete in a tube. So when you pull it out, you'll also get a tube where the reed will be positioned during shipping so that way it does not get damaged in the practice chanter so it will be in this tube so you will take it out carefully and you will put it into the chanter now you're going to hold the bottom section with the melody and the top portion is just the top section of the practice chanter and you go one way on and one way off when you start seeing the hem and it's fairly heavier in your right or left, whichever way you take it off, or whatever your strong point of your arm you use, whether it's left or right, you go one way on and one way off. So that way, once the heaviness is in your, your hand, then you can go back and forth gently. As I pull away, you will see the reed. Now, the reed is sit, sitting in the reed seat, as you can see. A rubber band here is placed over it, which I placed on the chanter reed, practice chanter reed, for tonage, softer, not so loud, a little bit softer, so that way if you're practicing in your room, you don't disturb your folks, or you can adjust it a little bit if you want to make it a little bit louder. But it's adjust at a certain position right now, so you can just blow the practice chanter and hear the two tone of the notes. So that way, you don't have to do anything with it until you have your lesson. So do not touch the rubber band. The way you place the reed in the reed seat, but basically when you take it off, you'll see a yellow band on the bottom that positions and cushions the reed in the reed seat. So when you take it out of the tube, you will hold the reed like this, where you don't touch the blades. That's the crucial part of the chanter read, practice chanter read, is the blades, vibration of these blades. So you hold it like this. End of the chant, uh, the bottom of the chanter, the reed seat, you position the practice chanter read in with the reed seat. And then two fingers, you just twist slightly, a quarter turn, so it's firm in the reed seat. Then, top, again, Whatever, whatever arm you use, it's your strong point. And the one you used to use, well, I think probably your right more than your left, but vice versa. You take the top, you put it closely to the reed and you bring it down into the chamber slowly. And then you see the hemp stage, go one direction again, turn, another turn, another turn, and then kind of go about to this point where there is what I call a space. So that way it doesn't, it has, the, the hemp doesn't swell to a point where you're playing quite a bit. Now the hemp's starting to swell with the moisture and condensation. So it'll be a lot tighter to take off and put on. So if you put a gap in between what's called the top ferrule, a ferrule to the top section of the channel, it gives some breathing room. So that way there gives a chance for the hemp to expand and contract naturally instead of all the way contracting to where you can't take the channel, the top, top section off. So that's a little trick. So that way there's a space in between and plus it makes it easier to take off. Again, bottom, top. To take off, you twist to recap a moment. And now that the pretty much the heaviness of the bottom channel is in your hand, you take it back and forth if you like because the weight is more in the hand now and you pull it out gently so you see the reed. And now you'll get condensation on the reed on both sides so you want to probably take a tissue just a tissue and just dry off the reed gently so that way you get rid of the condensation on it take the two pieces and lay them down on the table but a table where it doesn't roll off the table enough to where it sits gently on the table and let it sit for about five to six minutes and let it dry before you reuse the practice chair again and take them both up put it together again as we did before Put it on gently. Close it. One way on, one way off. And 
basically a little space so that way it can contract and expand correctly so that it gives a little air slightly air seep seepage so the hemp doesn't swell and it has condensation has a way to drip out slightly you probably won't even see it but enough to where it has space to where it can exit somewhere instead of just sitting inside the hemp of the channer between the top section now you might forget you might totally forget you didn't perform these procedures after you finished practicing for 15 15 minutes 20 minutes and you just left it on the table that's fine but take it apart gently to make sure you have cleaned the weed so you can actually practice for another 20 15 to 20 minutes because if just if you don't clean your reed and too much saturation on the reed it's going to eventually get closer to the blades and it'll act like a bubble gum reaction where it won't vibrate the blades and, it, and that's when you get a gurgly sound coming out of your channel so when you play through the channel and you blow through gently but you don't feel intimidated by your chanter intimidation is not what the channel is for you blow into the channel for a firm tone so this is what you're going to be doing on your first lesson is the scale starting with low G low A B C D E F high G and high A high G F E D C B low A then low G now that's the tone you I'll be looking for when you play the scale notes so this is a little bit of an introduction on a video that really help you when you get this mailing packet to you and you don't know what to do because obviously we can't be face to face at the, at the moment. So I wanted to make sure you truly understood how to take care of your practice channel, how to take care of the practice channel read, how to put it together and what tones, true tones that you should be listening for. So that way you blowing correctly into the channel and it's going to be a bit of a trial and error you, you're going to feel that you're not blowing enough or you might be blowing too much and you choke the reed it means you're overblowing into the channel which could happen so you're not really hearing the tone the tone of that particular melody note because you exerted too much and if you're under blow it probably probably going to sound a little raspy or undertone or low tone so it's these this particular tone that i put in the video is what you're looking for there you have it Wish you very well. Looking forward to your first lesson.